Okay, let's take a look at a simple circuit. We're going to have a uh, resistor and a capacitor. That's our circuit, resistor capacitor. This goes up to plus VCC and this goes to ground. And we're going to measure the voltage on our capacitor. And uh, if this is ground to begin with, there's nothing on the capacitor and we apply a VCC, then this resistor will charge that capacitor. And so if this is time and this is voltage, that capacitor is going to have some type of charging, right? And it's going to look like this. It's going to be an exponential curve and it will charge, okay? So how fast will it charge? Well, that is the RC time constant. RC time constant, which is R times C. So I'm going to put on the breadboard a circuit that has a 200 and 220, I guess. Yeah, 220 microfarad capacitor. And I'm going to be using a 10K resistor. Okay, so 10K. All right, so in our, in our uh, formula here, we have uh, 10 times E to the 3. I know sometimes like that people like to have big E's or I don't know. I just draw the little ones. Doesn't really matter. Uh, and then times 220 microfarads, which is minus six. All right. So let's do that. Uh, 10 E to the three. There's your big E. Okay. Are you happy? <laughs> and then we'll put in 220 E to the minus six and multiply those together. And that equals 2.2. 2.2 what? 2.2 seconds. Okay, so this should charge to 63% of its value in 2.2 seconds, right? So let's hook it up. Let's check it out. Okay, so here's our uh, 220 microfarad to ground, and here's our 10K to plus VCC, and we're going to measure the uh, voltage on the capacitor. And the voltage on the capacitor is 9 volts, as expected, okay? So I'm going to come in with a wire. I'm going to hook it up to ground, and I'm going to short that capacitor to ground. And it will go to zero, okay? It will go to zero. And then when I let go, it'll start to charge. Okay, so we're charging. So it takes a while for it to charge up to nine volts, but it will get there, okay? It should get to 63% of the way in 2.2 seconds. So it should be able to get to about 63, 6.3 uh, volts, okay? Should be able to get to, let's see, oh, about times nine. So it should get, get to about six volts in 2.2 seconds. Let's see if that's true, okay? Okay, go. One sheep, two sheep. That's about right. Okay, about two seconds. Okay, so one second, two seconds. So we're getting an RC of about 2.2. And then it takes a couple other RCs to finally get there. Remember, it kind of asymptotically goes up. So it takes a while for it to charge entirely. Um, but uh, it will get 63% of the way there in two seconds. All right. So, what are we going to do with this? Okay. All right. So we're going to um, take that voltage, which is now here, and instead of uh, remember we used to use that potentiometer to input the voltage to our 555. Well, we're going to use the voltage out of our capacitor instead. Okay. So when the voltage is high, the LED is on, and when the voltage is low, the LED is off. Okay. So let me come in with my little shorting wire again, okay? And I'm going to short the capacitor and our LED goes off. And then I'm going to start counting. One sheep, two sheep, th there you go. In two seconds, 2.2 seconds, the LED comes on. Um, that's because we're using this two thirds um, voltage divider, which is about 63% also, right? So it all kind of works out great for RCs and stuff. It's easier to calculate. When I let go, it takes about two seconds for that LED to turn on, okay? So this would be a great uh, reset, like power on reset circuit. Uh, you could have something like this. Um, or if you have a, uh, 
uh, a circuit. Let's say you have a, um, um, let's say you're building a radio. A lot of people are into ham radio on this channel. Um, you're building a radio and you have a, uh, a, what's called a Vox circuit. You have a circuit where you start to talk and it automatically starts transmitting. And then um, you want it to keep going until you don't talk any longer. But you don't want it to stop transmitting between sentences or between words. You want it to stay on. And so you set some thresholds. So it's like, um, as long as you're continuing to talk, and it's tickling this wire here. As long as you're continuing tickling that wire, you're transmitting, okay? So off means transmitting. And then if you finally finish your conversation and you shut up, then you go back to receive, right? So you can have a circuit something like that. Um, there's a bazillion reasons to, 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 use, uh, to use a circuit like this, okay? Okay, so now, what if <laughs> what if um, the circuit could reset itself? Let's say that you, you start it, and when it gets here, you tell it, touch the wire again, okay? I can do that visually, okay? Click, and then when I see the LED come on, I'll click it again. And when I see the LED come on, I click it again. So I'm an oscillator. I'm a oscillator, okay? We just need to have some feedback path where I can tell this capacitor and go to zero volts whenever that LED turns on, okay? You could have a uh, photocell. You could, when the LED comes on, that photocell could turn on and it could, it could drain your uh, capacitor. So you could do it that way, right? Um, but this is where that uh, open collector comes in, that, 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 that uh, NPN transistor down there. We're going to use that NPN transistor, and that NPN transistor to short out our capacitor, okay? So that is on pin seven. And so let's look at pin seven to our capacitor, okay? So pin seven and our capacitor is here. And I think you can see that LED is flashing now, okay? Now it's not gonna be a square wave, it's gonna be kind of a tickle wave. Um, but let's take a look at it on the oscilloscope and see what it's doing. All right, I decided to show you on the, uh, on the voltmeter since uh, I think it, it, it explains it better. So right now, when we're doing the reset, we're doing a very tiny pulse and it's, it's, not, it's not working well. So uh, we see that it, it is oscillating. You can see that the, the little meter is moving back and forth, but it's not, it's not like a nice square wave where it's low, then high, then low, then high, which is kind of what you want to see. It's kind of like low, low, then high, then low, then high, then high. It's not quite working quite well. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put a, 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 current, a current resistor uh, so let me let me show you what we're going to do here. All right, we've got the uh, capacitor, and we're charging it up, and then we're going to run this over, and we're going to run it into that uh, that NPN that NPN transistor. We're going to short it out with that NPN transistor. But what we're going to do is we're going to put in a, a resistor here, okay, and then. It will charge and it'll discharge and it'll charge and it'll discharge. So if we can set this around 10K, then it should go up and down at about the same rate, right? So, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, I'm gonna use my resistor substitution box, okay? And so we can, we can modify it a little bit if we wanna play with it. All right, so I'm going to, okay. Uh, I'm going to set up my resistor box. It wasn't working well with 10K. It needs to seem to have a hard, needs to have a harder, uh, harder value. But anyway, I'm putting a 4.7K. So we have 10K in the up direction, and we have 4.7K in the in the in the in the down direction. And here's what our here's what our capacitor is doing. Uh, we're we're it's charging up, and then that transistor turns on, and it it starts bleeding that tra that uh, uh, capacitor, and then it lets go and then we start charging up again. So there's our 555 going very slowly. Okay. Down, then up, and down, and up. Right. And we can watch the LED. 
should be about a 2.2 second LED. Done. Two. And down is about one second, and then up it's about two seconds. And there we go. All right. So that's how that's basically how five 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 timer works. It is a comparator, and it looks at a voltage, and it will trip at the two-third point and one-third point. So here's the one-third point, here's the two-third point. And it will go up until it trips. Now this is uh, probably the meter is a bit slower. It, 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 it got up to there before you got to see it. It started coming back and down again. Um, that's one of the problems with analog meters. They're a little bit slow to go on and off. But we're charging up and then we're charging down. And then we're charging up and we're charging down. And we're doing the, the set and the reset and the set and the reset on the latch. And then we can either output that directly or we can use that open collector drain uh, to feed back around and cause an oscillation. So anyway, that's a, a simple little introduction to 555 timers. And so now I hope you know uh, exactly what's going on here and uh, what, all this, what all the pins do, and maybe even use pin 5 someday, now that I've told you what that secret is. Um, and you can also use the, uh, the inputs uh, opposite, uh, in different ways as well. You don't have to tie them together. A lot of circuits, they are tied together, but you can, uh, you can use them separately too if you want to examine different things. Um, so, yeah, there you go.